This video will cover the topic, graphing a rational function linear over linear. In this video, we will learn how to interpret a linear over linear rational function and graph it on the coordinate plane. Let's begin with our rational function. We have f of x equals negative 3x plus 3 all over negative x plus 2. Our goal is to graph this. To do so, we have to figure out what the vertical and horizontal asymptotes are, if there are any, draw them, and then plot at least two points on each piece of the graph. The asymptotes are what break the graph into pieces. How am I going to be able to figure out the different pieces of the graph? To figure out the pieces, after we have drawn our asymptotes, we will start plugging different x values into our function to get our points. Once we have specific points plotted, it should then be clear to us where the pieces of the graph are. Let's start by finding any vertical asymptotes. A rational function in simplest form, like this one, has vertical asymptotes at the zeros of the denominator, so for x values that cause the denominator to equal zero. If we set negative x plus two equal to zero, what does x equal? I see that x equals two there, so that means there's a vertical asymptote at x equals two, right? You are correct, and it doesn't look like there are any other vertical asymptotes. So we will draw this one on the coordinate plane as a dotted line at x equals 2. This is our vertical asymptote. By the way, what exactly does an asymptote represent? Good question. An asymptote is something like a barrier or an invisible wall that the graph can never touch. It will get extremely close to it, but it will never actually touch it. In this case, we have x equals 2. Because x equals 2 causes the function to be undefined, there is no existing y value when x equals 2, so it is excluded from the graph. We will now find any horizontal asymptotes. The rule for horizontal asymptotes is this. We take the degree of the numerator and call it n, and we take the degree of the de denominator and call it m. If n is less than m, then y equals 0. If n equals m, then y equals the leading coefficient of the numerator divided by the leading coefficient of the denominator. And if n is greater than m, then there is no horizontal asymptote. Let's examine our function again. What is the degree of the numerator, and what is the degree of the denominator? It looks like they are both 1, so does that mean I divide the leading coefficient of the numerator by the leading coefficient of the denominator to get the horizontal asymptote? You're absolutely right. You can go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so I have negative 3 divided by negative 1, and that equals 3. So the horizontal asymptote is y equals 3. Very good. Now we can draw our horizontal asymptote, y equals 3, on the coordinate plane as a dotted line. Now we have two crossing asymptotes. There will be two pieces of this graph, so we need to figure out where they go. Some points that are always good to start with are the x and y intercepts. The y-intercept is where x equals 0, so we'll plug in 0 for x, we'll see that the 0 will cancel the negative 3 on the top, and then it'll cancel the, the x here, which will leave us with 3 halves. For the x-intercept, we plug in 0 for y, and then we solve for x. With cross multiplication, we can multiply negative x plus 2 by 0, which will leave us with 0 equals negative 3x plus 3. And then we solve for x. We subtract 3 on the left, which will leave us with negative 3 equals negative 3x. These cancel out, so x equals 1. Therefore, our y-intercept is 0, 3 halves, which we can plug in right here and 1 comma 0 is our x-intercept. This goes right here. We see that both of these points are to the left of the vertical asymptote and under the horizontal asymptote. We can also see how the shape of this piece of the graph will look. Something, something like that. We can then assume that the other piece will be to the right of the vertical asymptote and above the horizontal asymptote. But let's plug in a couple of x values to the right of the vertical asymptote just to make sure. Try x equals 3 and x equals 4. If I plug in 3 for x, 
3 times negative 3 equals negative 9 plus 3 on the top. And then in the denominator, negative 3 plus 2 equals negative 1. Simplifying that, negative 9 plus 3 equals negative 6 over negative 1, which gives me 6. So 3 comma 6 is one point of the graph, and that is above the horizontal asymptote. Now if I plug in 4 for x, negative 3 times 4 equals negative 12 plus 3 in the numerator, and in the, then in the denominator, I get negative 4 plus 2, which gives me negative 2. Simplifying that, I get negative 9 over negative 2, and then simplifying that even further, I get 9 halves. So 4 comma 9 halves is another point of the graph, and that is also above the horizontal asymptote. Very good, and Alex, after plotting two points on each side of the vertical asymptote, we can click on the graph button and it will finish the graph for us. However, if we were drawing this on paper, to get a more accurate graph, we should plot at least two more points on each side of the vertical asymptote. On the left, we could try negative 2, and we could try 1.5. And on the right, we could try x equals 2.5, and we could try x equals 5. Plugging these values in and plotting these points would give us a more accurate graph, and it would definitely impress our math teachers. We have our final graph drawn here. We can see that in each direction, the graph approaches but never touches the asymptotes. These asymptotes provide us with guidelines for where the graph is drawn. Great! Just as a review, when I graph a linear over linear rational function, find the vertical asymptote by finding the zero of the denominator, I find the horizontal asymptote by comparing the degrees of the numerator and the denominator, and then I plot some points on each side of the vertical asymptote to get my graph. Exactly!